Hello everyone, this is Bo Williamson in 5PY. This is part two of the uh, CW copying for your first QSO. What you're looking at here is FL Digi. We're going to talk about how to uh, set that up on your station. But the nice thing about this is you'll notice here in the window, we're actually copying this one particular station that's sending CQ, KY for Kentucky, uh, QP has something to do with the contest that he is working, uh, but it is actually copying Morse code. The top section that you see up here, we have the frequency, the mode, um, bandwidth of the filter, in this case 1200 hertz. Um, we have uh, a field where we can put the call sign. For example, if I click on a particular call sign, there we go, it puts it in call. As you see, it copied it in the uh, window, and I just double-clicked it and it put it in there. So again, this is the received portion of the signal. This is where you would normally type uh, and actually send things. Uh, and then down here are a whole bunch of macros that we're going to set up that make it a lot easier for a new CW operator to make use of them. And then, of course, finally, you can see what we call the waterfall section. And if you've worked any of these digital uh, modes like PSK or anything, you're familiar with a waterfall. Anyway, that's an introduction to the uh, FL Digi. And we're going to make use of it here in just a moment with new macros to show you how you can actually make use of this to do a QSO. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at uh, how we operate using these macros. Some of the macros that you see here listed are slightly modified as I tweaked them a bit for new CW operators. One of the key things that, since we're a new CW operator, is down here in the bottom, we, you can see that we have actually turned the speed knob on the keyer all the way down to five words a minute so that when we send, hopefully the guy at the other end who's listening and calls us back would use five words a minute. Now, the first thing that we, we want to look at is we're going to do the CQ. Uh, there's a couple of other things in here uh, that we're going to make use of. Well, let's start off with CQ. Hopefully we can actually hear uh, the Morse code uh, being keyed in the rig. So here we go. Let's call CQ. All right, there you go. You see, uh, hopefully we had enough volume there that you could hear the code. You can see that we sent CQ. This is your call sign, in my case, N5PY. Uh, new CW operator, K. So we're going to be sending that uh, several times, uh, trying to find somebody that will call us back, recognizing that we're a new CW operator, and kind of give us a break. Now, let's assume that somebody has called us and I got the first two letters of his call sign and it was KI but then I missed the rest of it so one of the things that we can do at that point is use the question mark so we're going to actually send question mark so he will send his call sign again so I can fill it in here we go there you go question mark did it da da did it so he sends his call sign to me again, and this time I fill it in and go back up here and fill it in. This happens to be a local uh, ham buddy of mine, K KI50. Now, once we've got that, we need to respond by sending him our report. And typically what we do for a new CW operator, short QSO, we're going to send him a signal report 
my QTH, and my name. So let's give that a go with the report macro. All right, there you go. So you can see that I sent his call sign and then said, you're 599. Of course, I'm using a cut numbers, meaning the nines are ends. So 599, QTH is Texas, operator or name is Bo, B-E-A-U-K. And so now at this point, we're waiting for him to send back the same basic information. The other thing is that since we got his call sign, not only are we going to be copying his CW here in FL Digi, once we've got his call sign there, we hit QRZ.com button. Now that opens QRZ, and there you can see there's KI50, his name, his location, so I can take and copy that. Let me see if I can do that. All right, that was Richardson, Texas. And if we look at what happened is it actually already put his um, operator name in the uh, logging information. Uh, it, it said the azimuth is 40 degrees if I'm going to swing my beam around. And I'm going to go ahead and put in his city and state so that when we get ready to do a log entry, it gives a full entry for Joe. Now, when he calls me back, he's probably going to send me a signal report. Typically, it's always 599, and that's what we're assuming up here, but we could change it if he sent something different. His QTH and his name. So we've already got that information, and we fudge by using QRZ.com, as well as watching what he sent in FL Digi as we're trying to copy at our slow speed. So once we've done that, we're ready to terminate the QSO, and we have a special thing here called log, and that's going to send the end of our QSO and log this into the logbook. So let's watch what happens here. All right, there we go. So we sent that, and you can see up here that we sent thank you, TU, that's standard abbreviation, 73s over and out, or SK. And then we turned right around and said QRZ, in other words, anybody else out there, this is N5PY, a new CW operator, over. And if somebody calls us back, that's great, we'll work another QSO. If not, we'll come down here and start hitting CQ again over and over until we get a QSO, QSO going again. Now, there's a couple of other things that I've got here. Um, let's look at this one right here. QSO is if he uh, wants to do a little chit-chat and I feel comfortable with that, then one of the things that we can do is send the start of a QSO, which is call signs, and then we can continue on with other text, either sending with our paddle, or guess what? We can actually type it. So look at this. Here we go. All 
Now notice we're still sending, so what we can simply do is send some text here. So you can see it's sending. Thank you, Joe. Nice to meet you. And you notice the little uh, up arrow, lowercase r, uh, terminated the transmission and brought us back to receive. So that's the QSO. The last thing I wanted to point out on our macros here is if we take a look at what's in the call, this is simply if we're no longer doing CQ and we're simply tuning in, in what we call search and pounce mode, then if we hear a particular station and we want to call them, then we can send our call, uh, send their call, this is my call, over and initiate the QSO. Only in this case, it's when uh, he's sending CQ. And then once he calls us back, he'll probably send report first. And then you can come back with your report. Now, one of the things is I didn't put in new CW op which might be something you might want to add to this macro, but that's up to you. Now, once again, the key thing about macros is you've saved them. You notice here there's a save option, but there's also an open where you can come in here and load the macro for whatever it is you want to do. You notice I've got several of them here, but CW new op is the one that we've already loaded. So now, one of the things is in our log, we actually made an entry into the logbook. So if I do a logbook view and I bring it over here where you can see it, there you go. I've logged our QSO with Joe, KI50. Although in my case, I really didn't do that. So I'm going to pull it out of my logbook. But you can see that would take care of doing the logging of your QSO. So that's basically showing you how to make use of the macros. And in the next video, we're going to actually use them on the air. I've been sending to my dummy load. Uh, but we're going to get on the air and send these. See if we can get somebody to call us back. And we're going to record the whole thing so you can see how this works. One of the last things is once we've logged this particular contact and we're ready to clear that out and make a new one, this is important right here. So watch when we press this button, clear, OK. We've cleared out and we're ready for our next contact. So that's what this little button is used for.